so because this is being posted on Facebook, I think um, a lot of people who might watch this might be um, have known me for a long time. Um, whether it's since we were like five or middle school, high school, college. Um, and so a lot of people who are watching this have probably experienced a lot of my darkest days. Um, you've probably maybe been there to hold my, hold my hair up when I was throwing up at a party or maybe you told me not to steal from my friends or stores. Um, maybe you were there for me when I was in jail uh, for breaking a window in my boyfriend's house or um, maybe you were part of the homecoming group who um, got suspended with me for being drunk at homecoming and um, had to miss our tolo. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many things. Um, but anyway, so this is my story. Um, so you probably might, if you were there in some of those times, be so weirded out or confused as to why I am in love with Jesus and why now all I talk about is Jesus on Facebook. Um, and maybe if you were in that time, you still don't, you don't talk to me now, so maybe you haven't heard, but, um, yeah. Um, so when I was in, I probably in started, um, finding my identity in who I dated, um, and acceptance by friends and wanting to be cool, probably in like sixth grade. I mean, probably my whole life, but, um, I spent a lot of time desiring to be loved and to be accepted and, um, found my worth in each guy that I dated and, um, if they were cool and if, um, you know, they wanted me, um, and so I chased that um, for a long time. And actually what changed me, I grew up in a Christian home, as most people know, and um, I wanted to know Jesus. Um, but I always felt a lot of shame because of my actions, because I was so desperate um, to be accepted and loved that I did things um, that were pretty crazy. Um, but, um, yeah, I, what really changed me, the moment that changed me, um, I had wanted to be with this one person, um, for six years, I think starting sophomore year of high school. Um, and I dated a lot of guys and it just never worked out to be with this person. Um, and then... Um, I had broken up with my last boyfriend before my husband, and um, I finally got the chance to sleep with him. And um, the next morning I woke up, and I felt so disgusting and so empty. And I just realized how he didn't even care about me. And no one cared about me. Um, my mom was disappointed in me. I mean, that happened in my mom's house. Um, and I just felt ugly. Like, I needed to wash off. Like, I just needed to get clean. Um, and I had no value and no worth anymore. I'd given it all away. Um, and... Um, The Lord was just saying to me, Rachel, you've tried everything to make yourself happy, and it's not working. Um, could you, why don't you just let me give, you, give it a shot? Like, why don't you just trust me and follow me, and maybe I'll do a better job than you're doing. And I just, in that moment, it was so weird. I just said, okay, like, I can't do this. I feel like a mess. Hey, come. So I gave God a chance. And um, after that, I started just reading the Bible like constantly. And I was so just like 
looking for direction and looking for um, how he was going to lead me to um, live differently. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the first thing was like being honest. Like I had never been honest. Um, and that sounds maybe silly, but like I literally, everything I said was in hopes of getting accepted and being liked. Like I didn't really know who I even was or what I even valued. Um, and the things that I did value, I would toss aside if it meant someone wasn't going to like me. So, um, I started being honest with people. Um, and then, I mean, it just went on from there, but the Lord was so good to me because he just gave me one thing at a time that like really convicted my heart and made me, um, change everything. You know, it was one thing at a time, a little bit by little. And like, um, I mean, he still does that, which is so gracious of him, um, to just convict me specifically. Um, and I mean, in that year, my whole life flipped. I mean, everything flipped over, um, uh, which I think a lot of people got to see firsthand. Um, I actually saw the guy, the last, that last guy, two years later, and he was like, Rachel, I felt like all of a sudden a light bulb went on, on in your head, like you didn't want me anymore, and like, it was true, it was so cool, um, anyways, and, and so everything changed, um, in my life from that point on, and so yeah, that's why I love Jesus, and that's the start, I mean, that's not the whole story. My mom died a year later after I became a believer, like exactly a year later. And so I got to, um, everything that I had learned over that year and every time that I had to obey and God just totally blessed the obedience. I got to look back on and be like, is God real? Because if God's not real, then heaven's not real. And if heaven's not real, then I don't know what's happening to my mom. And, um, I got to just wrestle with that again a year later and solidify what I, what I saw happen in my life. Um, and I think it just, I could just go on and on, but, um, that's my story. So if you didn't know it, now you know a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, of course you can ask me, um, cause there's a lot more. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening.